Uh, we're very pleased to welcome to World Football Daily for the very first time, and it's a real privilege to talk to this I- 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 individual. Uh, he was the former uh, managing director of Liverpool Football Club. Uh, he is now, and maybe he'll explain that what this means, a non executive director of the New York Cosmos. Uh, Rick Parry, welcome to World Football Daily. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a privilege to be talking to you. Thank you very much. You're very, very nice. welcome. And we really, uh, we really are very pleased to speak to you. Speak to you. Uh, let's talk about your, your Cosmos things. We are going to get into a little bit about Liverpool, if you don't mind, because it would be naive of us to think we could have you on the show and not discuss some of it. Um, New York Cosmos, they haven't even been awarded an <laughs> MLS franchise yet. Yet there's a lot going on. Yeah, I mean, it's a, for me, it's an incredibly exciting project and, and one that I'm delighted to be um, involved with. Um, you know, the Cosmos is a is a name that's on the tip of everybody's lips. My my 15 year old talks about the Cosmos and knows that Pele played for them, and yet he wasn't even born when they were around. So it's um, you know, it's a name that can conjure up a huge amount of uh, excitement. And um, and New York, of course, one of being the world's greatest. Uh, Cities. I, I think the potential um, the potential is enormous, and it's something I'm you know very very pleased and delighted to be involved with. Now, what is what is exactly the role you will play uh, in advising this new franchise to come to life? Basically, what role will you play, Rick? I think that is yet to be determined. Um, I'm very impressed with the uh, with, with the people that are uh, running the operation under under Paul Kemsley, and I think you know I'm a resource. Um, to be drawn upon, if you like, we're, we're getting to know each other. I'm I'm very new to it. Um, I, I would love to think that I can add some value. Uh, my experience at the Premier League and, and lastly at Liverpool. Um, I have a particular passion for youth development, which figures large on the uh, radar for the Cosmos. So you know, I, I'm there to help, to uh, to offer guidance and. Um, I think my role is going to uh, evolve over time as we get to know each other better. Well, break some news for us, if you would, then, uh, uh, Rick. But I'm sure you won't, but uh, let me ask the question anyway. We know that Terry Byrne is very much involved with the uh, Cosmos in, in a football operations situation. Can we can we assume that if Terry Byrne is there, David Beckham is going to have... This is going to be the ownership stake that he had written into his contract when he, when he joined MLS. No, I don't think you can assume anything of the sort at this moment in time. Um, clearly, Terry has had uh, you know, a long-standing relationship, uh, both on a work basis and a friendship basis with, uh, with David. But no, honestly, please just don't read uh, too much into that one at this stage. Well, Rick, can, let, can I just ask you this before we go back to the Cosmos and, and some of the vision perhaps you have or ideas you have for, for MLS going forward? What is your take right now? on the state of football? Because certainly when you were at Lancaster Gate, you brokered one of the biggest ever television deals. You were at the very, very outset uh, when the at Premier the League... Yeah. When the, yeah, the forefront, when Premier League was becoming what it is now, you were right there in the middle of it. What's, what's your take or assess, assessment on the state of British football right now? And I'm, I'm, I'm talking in regards to clubs that are severely in debt. Well, you know what... Um... <laughs> I, I remember in the mid 1980s people talking about the fact that football was in crisis. We had, uh, you know, we had the Taylor report to implement. We had hooligan problems. We had the ill-fated um, membership schemes that Mrs. Thatcher was trying to introduce. You know, if you believe the, the pundits, football is always in crisis, and yet it's to me it's 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 always fine and. The main thing about it is that, that, that overrides the problems is, you know, the passion has never been dimmed. It's on everybody's lips every day of every year. Um, of course, there are issues to be addressed, and we'd be foolish not to respond to that. And I'm, you know, very pleased in many ways that UEFA, at least, is grasping the nettle and introducing an element of, um, or trying to introduce an element of financial fair play and yeah. restrictions on what clubs can spend. That, you know... It's quite funny when you stand back, as, as I can at this moment in time, not being embroiled 24-7, but you know, there aren't many industries where the governing body has to insist that clubs make a profit and then everybody in it complains. 
you know. I'm yeah. <laughs> True. That's a really good point. Hey, going back to the Cosmos, uh, real quick. Um, as I said, the, the MLS hasn't even granted you a franchise. I think it's a formality, no question about that. Well, it, it, give us some information, if you would, about where the Cosmos would play. Clearly, I'm assuming in New York, um, they're not going to do a ground share with uh, the Red Bulls down in Harrison in New York, in New Jersey. Uh, what, what, can you tell us anything about where you think that um, the Cosmos would play? Would this be a new stadium situation? Um, well, I mean, I'd say the answer. I wouldn't. Uh, I, I would never take anything as a, as, a, as a as a formality. I think that's disrespectful to the uh, to the MLS. I mean, clearly, it's an aspiration that we have, and. Uh, we will do everything to the best of our ability. We will do everything well to make sure that we do things the right way. Um, but, but we will not be taking anything for granted. Um, of course, the answer to it has to be, it, you know, we are looking to New York. I mean, that, um, that, that's clear. In terms of exactly where and exactly what configuration, you know, honestly, that's yet to be determined. Right. I mean, New York, very, New- very preliminary stage. Right. I mean, New York, obviously, being an enormous city, there are the five boroughs. You know, there's Long Island, there's Westchester County, and stuff like that. I'm, I'm just wondering, is this, from your understanding? I'm not asking you to break any news, but the, the, the preference, if all, if everybody had their druthers, would it be to play in Manhattan? Would it be in, in Brooklyn? Would it be on Long Island? I, I don't think we're there yet, honestly. Um, you know, it's uh, it's still very, very early days. I think there are a lot of uh, a lot of options ahead of us. We'll be um, studying everything very, very carefully, thoroughly, and professionally. And uh, as I said, we don't we don't have any preconceived ideas at this moment in time. All right. Well, then let's get to some other stuff then, Rick. And again, thank you so much for joining us. We're talking to Rick Parry, um, a non-executive director, or is it non-director executive? I'm, I'm actually confused about the whole thing, um, of the New York Cosmos and the former managing director um, of Liverpool Football Club. We're six days away, or six days since, um, the, the debacle of what happened last last week in um, between Liverpool, London, and Dallas. Just give us your thoughts um, of what, as you witnessed what was going on? Well, you know, Liverpool's off limits. Um, I, um, uh, maybe I'm one of the few remaining believers, but I'm still a staunch believer of the Liverpool way and, and keeping things in-house, uh, keeping our own council, the way we've done it for uh, successfully for 100 years, and I think that's a good habit to return to. You know, the only thing I would like to say is I wish all the very best to, uh, to the new owners. I think that there are... I can see certain emotional parallels between, you know, the rivalry between Liverpool and Man United, the Red Sox and the Yankees. Um, I've been a fairly frequent visitor to Boston. I know the new owners are very well respected there for what they've done with the Red Sox. So, um, you know, I think it's exciting times ahead for Liverpool. Well, can you can then, then, then do this from what you know about the Red Sox and baseball? Um where are the differences or maybe the similarities between the ownership of an English Premier League club and a Major League Baseball club? And wh- where would you, if uh, you were advising them, where would you say there are some pitfalls that you need to be aware of? I don't like to focus on the pitfalls. I'd, I'd rather focus on, on the positives. And, you know, I think bearing in mind that they... They were able to pick up the World Series for the first time in 86 years. You know, there's, there's an enormous parallel there. Um, I think it's all about a passion for success. Um, you know, when I, when I was at the Premier League, people far, far more intelligent than me coined this great phrase, the virtuous circle, um, which is all about success on the pitch, driving revenues off it, which in turn are reinvested to create success on it. And, that, and that's what we're all striving for. Um, you know, in my... I'm at Liverpool. The, um, we were very clear on our focus. Our focus was to win silverware. Everything else was secondary. Um, and I think the new owners have made it clear that what they're going to focus on is, um, is success on the pitch. They've demonstrated that with the, with the Red Sox. They've also, of course, made a fantastic job of, of refurbishing Fenway Park, which, you know, for me, I'm not a good, don't ask me about my knowledge about baseball because that'll be a very short conversation. <laughs> right, yeah. but, All right, well, let, let uh, me when ask. I, let when me... I walk into a venue like Fenway Park, the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. Right. So, you know, you, you just get the feeling straight away that these are guys who get it and have uh, a sympathy for what, um, for what it's all about and for what the fans want. 
All right. Well, let, let me ask you something that I know you will answer because um, it, it's got nothing but positives for what the, the job that you had at the time uh, and um, <clears throat> where, where, you know, it, one of the great nights in football ever. Take us through your day, that May day in 2005, Istanbul. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, um, you may find this strange, but one of the things I've, I've still never done is to watch the DVD of that game again. I've, I've clearly got two or three copies at home, but... Um, but I've never got round because I've never really been a great believer in, in looking backwards. I, I'd always prefer to look to tomorrow rather than um, than yesterday. But but um, but yeah, oh, everything about that um, occasion was was just uh, just extraordinary. I mean, it, it was the closest thing to the um, you know to the unbelievable. But but you know, Liverpool made a habit of doing that. We had a five four in the UEFA Cup final in two thousand and one. Yeah. A nail-biting FA Cup final against um, West Ham. We, we were always great value for entertainment and great value for money for UEFA because we never did things the easy way. But, um, but you know, how many people anywhere on the planet would have thought at 3-0 at half-time we were going to come back? Not many, that's for sure. And it was uh, it was one of the... Uh, it was one of the greatest nights for me, uh, clearly, of uh, of all time. But it was one of the greatest nights for football of all time, mm-hmm. too, whoever your allegiances lay with. Yeah, well, it was a remarkable night. I remember jumping off the, my couch myself when Steven Gerrard scored that header, didn't take any celebration, got the crowd up for it. It was a magic moment, no doubt about it. Even as a Rangers fan, I'll admit that. Rick, tell us... Tell us the avenues and areas that football is yet to explore, not only from a commercial standpoint, but from a geographical standpoint. Uh, and, and, and you can focus this on Liverpool, because certainly they're a storied club, a fantastic historic club in Britain, but they need to drive more revenue to that club to get to the 300 million turnover, like a Manchester United who are almost at that point. What avenues and areas has football yet to explore? Well, everybody's exploring um, Asia and the Far East, but, um, but you know nobody has been enormously successful yet. Um, obviously, the popularity of the game is is growing across the globe. The po- popularity of the Premier League is um, you know is, is massive. Um, we've been with Liverpool on a number of occasions to Southeast Asia, and, and the, the passion of the fans there is uh, is, is quite extraordinary. Um, I think a lot of people are excited about the potential in, in China, which of course has a vast population. Um, and I think the one that's that's the fledgling territory where where it hasn't really taken off yet, but I'm positive it will, is India. I think that's the uh, yep. you know, India is going to be the um, the up and coming. But but you know what the the challenge for everybody is um, is how you make commercial sense out of that. You can you can very easily be a very busy fool running around the uh, the Far East. You, you could spend every waking hour there, um, and there are you know, tens of millions of supporters there, but, but getting them to part with money, getting monetized that interest successfully, that, that's the challenge, really, that, that everybody is um, grappling with. And, and, of course, for Liverpool, you know, there's a, there's a bigger challenge closer to home, which is, um, which is finding, finding a solution for the stadium, because, mm-hmm. you know... The, the club is in the order of 50 million a year, I guess, behind um, Manchester United just in pure game day revenues. Yep. And that's, um, that's, you know, a, that's lot. a huge challenge to overcome.